In today's video, I'm going to show you how to keep modules fixed in the column container in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start by uh, creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here and click on add new. You're going to call this page sticky or you can call it whatever you want. In fact, let me just get rid of this. All right, so I'm going to give this a name. So let's call this sticky. Use Divi Builder. So here we're going to start from scratch, although you can also add this section on an existing website. So I'm going to click here on start building. And what we're going to need here is, a, in fact, let's start off by adding our customizations to our section. So let's go over here to our section settings. So what we're going to do first is we are going to add some padding. So I'm going to come over here to design and then I'm going to click on spacing. So we're going to start off with the top padding, which is going to be v, uh, 7VW. And then on the bottom padding, we are going to set this to 20 VW. Now, by the way, if you want to use the exact same settings as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that we've added the bottom padding, we need to add the column structure now. So I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna come over here and click this plus button. So we need four columns, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this. Now, before we add any modules, let's go into our row settings. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon, click on design, and then sizing. Here we need to set our gutter width. So I'm gonna click here on yes, and then I'm gonna set my gutter width to one. So pretty much the gutter width is the space between the columns. By setting it to one, it means there won't be any spaces between the columns. Next, we want to equalize our column height. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then we need to set our width. So here I'm gonna set it to 100% and then 100% for the maximum width as well. Now it's time to go into our specific columns. So I'm going to come back over here to content and then click on my second column. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design. So here what we need to do is to add a top padding. So I'm going to click here on, on uh, spacing and my top padding here is going to be 20 VW. Next, I'm going to go to column number three. So I'm going to go back over here, click on the gear icon, design, spacing, and again, I'm going to add my 40 VW, and that's to column three. And then I also need to do the same to the final one, which is column four. So I'm going to hit this back and then go to column four, design, spacing, and then I'm going to set my 60 VW. Now, this is what shows these as steps or staggered. All right, so now that I've uh, set all that, let's add all our content now. So I'm going to go to column one and add our content. So I'm gonna save this, save this one more time. And then I'm gonna click on this plus button and add our call to action. So I'm gonna select it. So here now is where you can just customize this with uh, whatever text you need to uh, add in here. So here I'm just gonna type in delicious donuts. So I'm gonna leave a bit of this text over there, but in your case, you want to use that text for your descriptions. So for the button to show, as you can see here, the button is not showing. So if you need the button to show, you need to come over here to the link and specify the link. So in my case here, I'm just gonna add a blank one. So that's gonna be my button. Now let's uh, remove this background color here because to be honest, I'm not really a fan of this. So let's go to the background and let's add a white background. So I'm just gonna paste in the value for white here. And you can see immediately everything has disappeared and that's because the text is white. Now to fix that, we need to come over here to design and then you need to click on text and we need to change this from light to dark. So now you can see everything shows. All right, so what we need to do now is to customize these fonts. So I'm gonna come over here to the heading and instead of using a default font, we are going to use a font called a spectral. I'm gonna select it and for my text color here, I'm just gonna click on the eyedropper tool and set this to black. So I'm gonna drag all this way down to black. And then I'm also going to set my title text size. So by default, it's set at 26. So we're gonna set this to 2VW. Now let's move on to the text. So I'm gonna come over here. And again, we're gonna change our body text here and set this to Fira Sans. So I'm gonna select that. And for the font weight, I'm gonna set this to light and the color is going to be black as well. So I know I've used black a moment ago, so I'm gonna click here on my recent colors and select black. Now for my body text size, I'm gonna set this to 1VW. 
And then for my line height, I'm going to set it to 1.8 EM. Right, so as you can see, our button here needs some styling. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click here on this brush tool, and this is going to take me straight to my uh, button settings. So in order for us to make changes to this, I need to activate use custom styles for button. And then I am going to start by adding my text color. So here we're going to set this to white. So I'm going to drag this all the way up and set it to white. And then over here on the background, I'm going to set my background color. Now moving on, on the button border width, I'm going to set this to zero. So I'm just going to drag the slider all the way down to zero pixels. So moving on, we are also going to set our border radius. So here I'm going to set it to 50 VW. And now we have a totally different style there for our button. So I know we used a font called Fira Sans. We need to use that now for our button. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click here and choose Fira Sans. Now let's do further customizations here to our button. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here to our padding. So for the top and bottom, I'm going to set this to 1VW. And then over here on the left and right, I'm going to set it to 3VW. So next, I'm going to give this call to action a breathe, some breathing space. So I'm going to go all the way down here to spacing. And I'm going to add padding of 8VW, both to the top and the bottom. And I'm also going to add some rounded corners. So I'm going to click here on border. And I want these rounded corners to be on all four sides. So I'm going to set this to 1VW. And now to achieve that, you need to make sure that your chain here is activated. If it's not activated, the borders won't show on all the sides. So the next thing we're going to do now is to head over to our shadows. So I'm going to click here on box shadow and I'm going to click on the first option. And you can see now our borders are starting to show. Okay, so we need to uh, make some adjustments to a few things here. So we need to uh, first add our horizontal position. So I'm going to come over here and um, set our horizontal position to 10 pixels. And I also need to set my blur strength to 50 pixels. And then finally, I need to add my color for the shadow because right now it's a bit too a bit too much so i'm going to come over here click on this eyedropper tool and i'm going to paste my value between the brackets just like that so you can see here now it's very subtle right so the next stage is to add a css class so i'm going to come over here to advanced css id and classes and i'm going to add my css class here so this is what's going to allow our module to be sticky so pretty much i'm done here i'm going to save all right, so the next stage is to add an image module to column one. So I'm just going to come over here now and click on this plus button, search for my image module and select it. I'm going to click here and choose my image. So I'm going to go with this donut. And if you want to use the exact same dimensions, the ones I'm using here are 320 by 320. So I'm going to click upload an image. And then I'm going to go come over here to design alignment and make sure my image alignment is set to centered. Next, we're going to come over here to sizing and make sure you select force full width. Now let's head over here to spacing because what we need to do here is to add our margins. So I'm going to start with my top margin and this is going to be minus five VW. And then I'm also going to add my bottom margin. And here we're going to set it to minus 12 VW. And then we also need our left and right padding. So here I'm going to set it to 3VW and this needs to be applied to both sides. So I'm going to activate my chain and that allows me to add it to both sides. So that's all I need to do here. I'm going to save. So what we need to do now is to clone these two modules onto the remainder of these columns here. So to do that, I'm going to... Uh, head over here to my wireframe mode because I can see it much easier here. So I'm going to duplicate here and drag it over to the right, duplicate the image, drag it over to the right. Then I'm going to keep doing this until I add them to all the columns. So I find that using this is much easier because I can see where everything is. There we go. So I've added everything. So now I can switch back over here now to the desktop mode and as you can see here i filled in all the spaces now we need to go in and change the images so let me start here with column two so i'm going to click here on module settings 
And then I'm just gonna choose my image here. I'm gonna go with this one. And notice that the sizes are all the same. So I'm gonna click upload, I'm gonna save that. Come over here to this one. Change this one to that. And then let's do the final one. I'm gonna click here on the gear icon. And this time I am going to go with, in fact, I'll just use that one. Upload, save. Now what you can also do to, um, to change the design of this or to give it a bit of more style, you can go in here and change the colors to the buttons. So let me go ahead and do one of them and then you can go and do the rest. So I'm gonna go into design and click here on this brush tool and this is gonna take us to our button. So all I have to do now is to change my button color. So go ahead and change the colors of the remaining buttons. Okay, so I've gone ahead and changed the colors to the buttons. And so another thing that you may also want to do is to go in and also change the titles of these columns. Right, so the next stage is to add some CSS code to our columns. So I'm gonna go over here to my row settings, and then I'm gonna start with column one. I'm gonna click here on this gear icon, advanced. And what we need to do is to add our CSS class. So I'm gonna come over here to CSS ID and classes, and I'm gonna add my class. So you want to repeat this on all the columns. In fact, on column one, two, and three. So now let's go to column two, CSS ID and classes, add our class. Let's go back to the last one now, column three, advanced CSS ID and classes, I'm gonna add it here. Now, if you want to just copy this class, I'll uh, link to in the video description below. Okay, so now that we have done, uh, we're done with this, I'm gonna save this, save this one more time, and we are going to add a second row. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, and this row is going to have a single column. And here we're going to add a code module. So I'm gonna add my code module. And I have some uh, CSS code here that I'm going to add. So you need to go to the post I'll link to in the show notes below to get that code. So I'm gonna paste my code in here and save. So this now is going to give us our style. I'm gonna hit publish. Now let's take a look at our final result. So now I'm just gonna scroll down and you can see here they are sticky and it is definitely working. So go ahead and try it out. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.